Hello everyone, welcome back to my Let's Play of Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, Part 3, Storyline Number 3. We are playing as Shadow the Hedgehog, first aired in Sonic Adventure 2. Let's get right into it. Alright, so now we're playing a Shadow of the Hedgehog in our first level, White Acropolis, which is Eggman's secret base is first located. And, um, it's up to Shadow, and basically the briefing is that Rouge Bat has been kidnapped, and it's up to Double Agent Shadow the Hedgehog working for Gun, the same exact people who, uh, were framed to, uh, arrest a hedgehog in blue, not black, but whatevs, to, uh, basically go and, uh, investigate Dr. Eggman's base. So yeah, Shadow now works for Gun. The same exact people who gave Shadow so much shit in Sonic Adventure 2 and Shadow the Hedgehog. I want to say Rouge is basically the one who, uh, who basically, uh, gave Shadow the, uh, position because she did work for Gun in Sonic Adventure 2. And, uh, after coming to, uh, Sonic Heroes, noting that, uh, Shadow is alive all this time, and because Rouge did not decide to explain a little Torley, uh, tell Shadow his backstory, it leads his mind all over the place, and we don't even know what exactly his mind's up to. Again, he has absolutely no memory of Sonic Adventure 2 as of... Right now, he has a little bit of memory, because, um, mainly some flashbacks and information that was scattering around in between Shadow the Hedgehog's continuity. Especially when the continuity is all over the place in that game, because there's ten freaking storylines. Ten endings, actually. And, uh, God knows if it's ever gonna be, uh, fixed again. And no, I'm not gonna do a Let's Play of Shadow the Hedgehog or Sonic Heroes. These are, like pretty straightforward games in some way or form. Anyways, we're finally getting access to Rouge the Bat. And Rouge the Bat, um, she definitely controls a little bit more like, more like Sonic Adventure 2 with the power to glide and climb walls and everything else. However, taking from Sonic Hero, she's also, just like Tails, would also have the ability to throw bombs. Now, to be granted, at least they're not ring bombs, so it ain't completely like Sonic Heroes, but still, why bombs? I honestly don't understand this. But anyway, so, out of separation from talking about the characters, let's talk about White Acropolis. So, it is a snow level like Ice Cap from Sonic Adventure 1, and, uh, well, for this level... Basically, uh, the first the first half is going down a hill. Second half is disabling searchlights, and uh, that will basically open the way to uh, get farther in. And for Shadow's version of White Acropolis, what you gotta do to complete the stage is to actually shoot out all five of the searchlights. And uh, it will be easier to do it with a returning feature from Shadow the Hedgehog, and that is vehicles, and this is the armed buggy. It's like a, uh, it's basically like an ATV, and it does have missiles on it. It will shoot two missiles at a time, of course, and, uh, it can fall over if you're not careful with it, but you use the buggy to basically, uh, shoot out the, uh, light towers because the level will not end unless all five of these things are out of there. So right there was the second one I destroyed, I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah, that's definitely the second one. This is the third one. I destroyed that. And, uh, jump across over here and have to go up that ramp and, uh, take care of the other two. One thing I do not like from Rouge, and I'm gonna talk about it later down the road for another character on, is that when you... It's that there's this weird bug that absolutely has no reason to exist other than Sonic... Free and Knuckles, or even Sonic Adventure 2, or even Sonic Adventure 1 even. But, um, when you grab onto a wall, usually you jump off the wall and then glide onto another wall. But for some reason, Rouge just doesn't like to get off the wall. Like, he just gets stuck. I, I keep pushing the A button, I get stuck in the wall. Sometimes I get good luck trying to get out of the wall because, like, gosh darn... This, I shouldn't be able to do this. And I'm gonna say that a lot. Maybe I should add a counter for, I shouldn't be able to do this. I did say that a few episodes ago, I don't know when. But if, as I said, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 is a very buggy game, so... Please take this game with a full grain of salt. And, uh... And again, I'm, don't expect any good results from this game. Don't you want to know what this is? My assignment was to rescue you, nothing more. Fine. With you, it's always business. It seems they don't want us to leave. <laughs> Let's get this over with. Alrighty, so, for a second time, we are fighting off the Egg Cerberus. So, if you don't know anything from the Sonic playthrough on my first part of it, the Egg Cerberus is basically, uh, what you gotta do is you gotta grab onto the tail, grind on it, and then grab onto the horn, and then of course you gotta make it run into something, of course. They do, of course, the same exact thing on this level. But, um, now, there's enemies everywhere, and uh, searchlights everywhere, and um, the thing is, in Sonic's version of the fight, there were two statues that will make that if you run into these things with the uh, Egg Cerberus, he will take double damage, so he will die faster. So I guess like getting an S rank by time bonus alone is a possibility. But here, there actually is no statue, so in other words, no matter what you do, you will have to give him four hits. And you think, like, the metal door or anything would count as, like, a double hit potential, but it doesn't. The problems with the Egg Cerberus still affects here, such as, like, when you get to here. When he jumps up to that, uh, upper level, the camera does lock onto him, but the problem is, like, the camera's also too zoomed into your character, so it's really hard to see what is around you if it's just too zoomed in. But, um... But yeah, I don't think that the bosses is based on time alone. I think it's also based on score. So as such, I do recommend taking out the uh, egg robots around uh, around this arena if you want like to get a good score bonus. Because like it's probably your best bet if you want to get an S rank on this level. Overall, like. Dig Cerberus, I was actually able to take him out really quickly, even if it's just only four hits. Took a little bit, but like... Dig Cerberus is like, could take a little bit out of it. But not much to say, and that's also the last time we're going to be seeing the Egg Cerberus, so thank goodness. Anyway, so, also, as of, like, say, because it's defeating the boss will take the longest amount of time, and your best bet to, uh, get a good amount if you wanna, of 
of course, get an S rank. Obviously, what you gotta do is to kill the enemies around. I got an S rank. Mainly because I think I just killed the enemies, that's all. And yes, I'm gonna include an S rank counter. Right now, I got four S rank for up this entire playthrough. And uh, if you're watching this on chronological order, which will be there will be two playlists, of course. And uh, watching chronological order playlist could probably be a little bit confusing. So I recommend watching the storyline playlist if you want to, like, see how I uploaded this series. Ah, Soliana, the city of water. It has a constitutional monarchy, you know. The primary industries are tourism and crafting precision machinery. The current sovereign is Princess Elise III. Why does Eggman's base lead to an odd place like this? How should I know? I just followed my orders and retrieved the item. Anyway, I have a little favor to ask of you. Could you escort me to the G.U.N. Rendezvous Point? Where's the Rendezvous Point? It's the ancient castle of Soliana in Kingdom Valley. So, now leaving Waycropolis, we now enter our third hub world. So, this is our third hub world, which is Soliana's big city. Uh, this is a city, a hub world, compared to regular Soliana. Soliana. There ain't too many buildings around, but there's a lot of signs everywhere, like I'm a moth for our signs and stop signs and everything else, but there's literally no cars. I feel like the game was programmed to have cars, but scrapped it nearly last minute. I don't know. But we're not going to be here very long because what we're doing is we're actually leaving this area to go to, of course, the hub world we had to start off with in uh, Silver's playthrough, which, of course, you guessed it, Soliana's Big Forest. And this is like the worst hub world of the entire game, but. Thankfully, we're not silver. We are definitely a character that can move more than two miles per hour at best, so thank God. Anyways, we are now ordering two items from the shop. Uh, one of them was an item that we got at Sonic, which is the air chip. In other words, the light speed dash, which allows you to light speed dash across this bridge that is still in construction. And we're able to access this area, of course. The second item, of course, is a power-up exclusive for Shadow. Now, the energy bar on the bottom right is basically um, is basically an energy gauge, and three hedgehogs always have this. Um, Silver uses for his telekinesis powers. Sonic used it for um, a few factors. One of them was holding on to Princess Elise to uh, to basically survive the desert, the dusty desert. And, uh, it was gonna be used for a third thing for Sonic, but you'll start to realize a humongous problem with the meter once we get to it, but we'll talk more about that when we get to it, of course. But for Shadow, basically the meter, what it will be capable of doing, it will activate Shadow's Chaos Boost Power by pushing the right trigger on your controller. You will start to glow red and filled with rage. And, uh, with the first ability... Basically, it will make your attacks double the strength than usual, and uh, I think you can also use Chaos Snap. You can use Chaos Snap on these, uh, on, on enemies, but it won't, it will most likely or not would just stun them. It won't actually do much damage to them. And I spent a good amount of time trying to break this rock. It, they said use Chaos Blast, but I did the homing attack. That is not Chaos Blast. It took me a while to get in there, but... Look... Thankfully, because this is a post-commentary Let's Play, I can easily just skip straight to the point, and you won't have to worry about too much filler. And as we enter Kingdom Valley, the uh, second new level, we gain control of Shadow's second vehicle, which is the Hand Glider. The Hand Glider, of course, is like a glider. Basically, you gl use it to glide across the level. You use uh, two missiles to shoot your targets. They do home in on them, don't worry. 
But, um, I also will say this. You don't actually need to control the glider to beat a certain section. You can actually just not touch the analog stick at all and just beat the first act of Kingdom Valley without doing anything. So, you can save this as the, uh, Shadow wins by doing absolutely nothing trilogy like Luigi would. But, um... I think the reason why I activated, the reason why I decided to constantly shoot, mainly because I want a better ranking. Because like sometimes, like although it's good to not do anything, so that we won't have to deal with too much, uh, that we won't have to like deal with too much bullshit. At the end of the day, I really want to make sure I save some time and not have to worry about replaying optional side missions. So it's important for me to like get some good rankings and while I still can. Anyways, so now we're coming across um, Rouge's most disadvantaged part. And um, you know in Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Adventure 1 where you have to you have a radar to find the master emerald pieces, or for Sonic Adventure 2's case, look for free keys of a desert. Well, here you're finding free keys, but there is no radar. You are completely you're completely blind trying to find these keys. Now, for granted, they are in the same place every time you play the game. But for your first playthrough, I doubt that you're gonna have very much that you're gonna have very much good luck out of it because, like again, no radar. So, uh, an interesting feature that the first two games did so well, and they just got rid of it. And, uh, the first two keys, they're pretty much out in the open. You won't have to w do too much to get these. Just take out some mechs, and, uh, you're pretty much good to go. The third key is really well hidden, though. What, it's inside of a, uh, it is inside of a tower. And the only way to get into that tower is to bomb a stained glass window with Rouge's bombs. And whoa! Okay, that was some crazy collision right there. I'm not sure what the heck happened there. Sonic 06, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe I should probably make a glitch counter as well. Making three separate counters for this let's play. I don't know. Anyways, right here's the stained glass window. And, uh, this is where the last key is. And of course, all you gotta do is clear up all the enemies, get the key, and basically you're done with Rooch. So, again, I wish they had a radar. I feel like that would definitely save a lot of hassle. Even if it's just like, it's all gonna be in the same place anyway, every, to every playthrough. It's good to appreciate the option. Now, moving on to probably the worst vehicle of Shadows. The hovercraft. So the hovercraft is pretty loose, it, but it does have like machine guns, and uh, you basically shoot it, and uh, it will basically deal a lot of damage to each character, uh, to each enemy, and also every object around you. But the problem is, for this stage instance, there is falling pillars, and most of the time you can't really see where they're gonna land on, unless you get the camera in the right place. So right here. That pillar just out of nowhere just crushed me and I fall into the swamp below and like my reaction was like oh fuck you game oh fuck you so you have to now you can like rotate the camera so you can see um, all the pillars and when they're gonna fall however I need to see where I'm going because like I like although I can see above me I can't see in front of me and I could be under fire by enemies, or I can even run into an object that I couldn't even see. Oh, and, oh my god! That that scared me for a second. I thought I was dead. Um, but uh, anyways, um, I mean, luckily you won't have to take the hovercraft too much. But again, only a few levels use this, so we won't have to worry too much about it. Again, it's not. It's probably one of, out of any, out of all of Shadow's vehicles, it's one of the worst vehicles in the game. But thankfully we're going to use it too much.
anyways, let's talk more about Shadow in terms of how he plays, by the way. So, Shadow is sort of like Sonic, but he is more combat-oriented. So, obviously, he has his chaos powers, but, um, he is really good in combat-wise, because, like, there's a ton of enemies that are going to be ramping health bars. And, uh, basically, the best way to handle it is, like, for certain enemies that will definitely get a much better health bar, like, probably either a humongous giant robot... Or, uh, one of those, uh, one of those robots that are a separate color from the others. If you mash the A button, then you will repeatedly do some punching and kicking to drain out the health bar. And that's really good to take out such guys like these. Well, if there's no strength in numbers, then, uh, then what are you expecting, Shadow? Oh. But, um, another problem that Sonic 06 does go into is scaling the difficulty. This is Shadow's second stage. Kingdom Valley, uh, for Sonic and Silver, is, like, nearly near the end of the game. Like, the second to last levels for both Sonic and Silver. Spoiler alerts, by the way. But this is Shadow's second stage. There's, I think, like... I feel like they don't know what scaling difficulty is, like, like, sure, like, Wave Ocean, I believe, is probably the first level they created, so the first level they create will probably be the easiest level. The last level they probably made was probably this level. And, like, they always consider, like, making the last level a hard one. But, for Shadow's second stage, this is, this is, like... This is, like, mind-boggling, man. It's, like... What's what's wrong with scaling the difficulty? It shouldn't be that hard. Even, like... I know Mario Bros. 3 also didn't do it that, that well either, because, like, there were times where, like, World 4 is harder than World, uh... 5? And, uh... World 7 is easier than World 8 or something like that? I mean, it may not be exactly that accurate, but, like, it's very similar. Like, scaling the difficulty from, like, starting things easy, and then slowly wrecking it up to hard. So, like, you get to the point where people should be used to the game by now. Let's see how they can pass through this ultimate test of, like, everything is not going to be going in your favor anymore. You're no longer on training wheels. You are on your own. I really hope that you know how this game works. Otherwise, you're probably going to have a bad time. We're getting close to the extraction point. Anyways, we're getting close to the extraction point. So we're basically getting near the end of this video. And that'll be the end for the Shadow uh, video for right now. But yeah, that is basically all three of the stories. And we will be swapping between these three as this Let's Play goes on. For uh, the next part, I think think what we're doing next is we're probably playing as Silver next. Yes. I think Silver will be uh, our part four, so I'll see you guys when we continue down in the Silver Road. I remember what that, if you're watching this Let's Play in the Chronological Playlist, I'll see you guys in the next Shadow part. But again, I'm also uploading this Let's Play in storyline fashion. And sure, like, episode one was not in, like, the first part in Storyland fashion. Again, it was the only episode we have access to in the time. But, um, but I digress. S rank, I, even though I died midway because of out of nowhere falling pillars, I still got an S rank. How surprising is that? I'm a pro at this game. Anyways, guys, I'll see you guys next time for the Silver Playthrough or Shadow Playthrough, depending on which playlist you're watching. Marvin 641, signing out. Have yourself a fantastic night, and I'll see you, Legends, in the next one. Good night, guys.